everybody, welcome back to the 30 day EKG challenge. Today is day seven. We're gonna be going over complete AV blocks, complete heart blocks or third degree heart blocks. They're all synonymous terms. And this is our last series in the AV block series. I'm really excited that we have gone through the progression of first degree, the multiple types of second degree, and then now onto our third degree or complete heart blocks. If you haven't watched the previous videos, go ahead and hit the playlist and go check out the first six videos. Remember, we're gonna be progressing through different concepts, but building on each of those concepts for 30 straight days on the EKG and learn how it uh, ties in anatomically to the heart. So let's talk about third degree AV blocks. Remember we have been saying that a third degree heart block is when no P waves make it to a QRS complex or no P waves conduct to a QRS complex. This means that there is complete blockade at the AV junction. If I take a look at the heart here, it doesn't matter what view I, I view the heart, and this is my coronal view of my limb leads. Remember my AV junction is right here, AV junction containing the AV node in the bundle of Hiss, and that's the only highway system. That's the only one lane highway, the only entrance and exit between the atria and the ventricles. So any P waves that normally fire off from the sinus node and depolarize the atria, any P waves, the only way that they can get to the ventricles is that the AV node captures that signal and sends it down, right? And that usually is coupled, that P wave and that QRS is usually coupled by the AV node. That's why we usually see P, QRS, P, and then a QRS. And so what happens in complete AV block is this highway system between the atria and the ventricles doesn't work. And what happens when it doesn't work is you get blockade. No signals are allowed through the one lane highway system. And so if you can imagine, I can pretty much just draw a line in between my atria and my ventricles. And guess what? Sorry, there was a bug. No signal is going to get through. So let's talk about what will happen. You'll have a P wave, and this P wave will originate from the sinus node like it always does. Remember that the sinus node beats, you know, predictably. It's gonna, it's a pacemaker node. It's gonna fire off every 60 to 100 beats per minute. And every time it fires off in a complete AV block, it's gonna depolarize the atria. And that depolarization is gonna create our P wave. But look, the P wave just ends. There is no way for this P wave to get through to the ventricles. It just stops. It's completely blocked every single time. So you're gonna have P wave after P wave after P wave after P wave with no QRS that it's conducted to. And so if I just completely blocked off the ventricles from my mind, if I acted like the ventricles weren't even there, what would this rhythm look like if there were no ventricles? It would just look like this. You would just have, if I just drew it over here, you would just have P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave, right? There would be no QRS complexes because every single P wave is blocked. But you might be asking but that we, would, we wouldn't be living. We wouldn't even be able to interpret this rhythm if that was the case. So obviously there is a ventricular rhythm. The ventricular rhythm though, in a complete heart block is called an escape rhythm. It's gonna be an escape rhythm. We do this in a different color. And what does that mean? Escape rhythms are these types of rhythms that are the backup rhythms of the heart. An escape rhythm um, is usually generated by something below the level of the nodes. And so maybe the ventricles in this case, it's not receiving any signal because the AV node is completely blocked. And so there might be an escape rhythm, say that fires off from the junction right here at the bundle of Hiss. And that junctional escape rhythm is gonna fire off and depolarize the ventricles and create our QRS complex. An escape rhythm, there's a couple things about escape rhythms that we need to remember. One, the regular. And two, they're usually pretty slow. What I showed you here was a junctional escape rhythm. It's coming from the AV junction. And notice that my signal, whenever I drew that, is coming down 
that Hisper-Kinji system. So that will be a narrow complex rhythm. And usually the junctional escape rhythms are occurring anywhere between 40 to 60 beats per minute. You could also have a ventricular escape rhythm that comes from a some type of ectopic focus here within the ventricles. And they depolarize slowly from cell to cell, gap junction to gap junction. And ventricular escape rhythms usually occur at 20 to 40 beats per minute, so even more slowly. They're going to be a wide complex escape rhythm because they're taking that slow Hisper-Kinji, or they're not taking this, the, this fast Hisper-Kinji fibers, they're taking the slow gap junction to gap junction. And so in this case, we have an escape beat. We need an escape beat to depolarize the ventricles. Why? Because our AV node is completely blocked. And so let's act like we took the atria out of the equation, and what would that look like? You would just have a QRS complex that occurs every so often. Let me draw this again. You would just have a QRS complex. Remember, this is going to be a slow escape rhythm. And these QRS complexes are just going to be occurring at their own pace. And that's going to be our escape rhythm. So what you're noticing here is that our uh, EKG rhythms that are created by a complete AV block are essentially going to have two different regular aspects to the rhythm. You're going to have P waves that are just marching through the rhythm, and then you're going to have QRS complexes that are just marching through the rhythm. The atrial rate, the P rate, the, the P rate or the atrial rate the atrial rate will be greater than that of the ventricular rate. Because remember, those P waves are beating off, beating, 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 trying to get through the ventricles, but they're not, and we have an escape rhythm in the ventricles. So let's take a look at this EKG and see if we can make sense of this complete heart block. Remember, complete heart blocks, it's just the rhythm. So we're not going to go through the full entire EKG here. We're just going to go down to the rhythm strip. And maybe I'll start at lead two. And what I'll do is when I first look at this EKG, I just scan through the rhythm like I always do, try to get an idea of what is going on. I see I have a regular rhythm. See, I have regularly occurring QRS complexes. And I look at the rate. And maybe I'll start with a QRS complex here. And I'll say... 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, this is 43, so we'll call this maybe 48 beats per minute. So we certainly have a slow QRS rhythm, so I'm thinking this is a bradycardia, so what are the causes of slow rhythms? Well, we could have sinus bradycardia, we could have AV blocks, so I look for an AV block. So I think to myself, well, what is the atria doing? How is the atria driving this rhythm? So I look for P waves, and I certainly see some P waves. I'll do it in red. There's a P wave here. Looks like there's a P wave there. But I'm noticing oh, there's another P wave. But I'm noticing that there's P waves. The distance that they occur from the QRS isn't the same every single time. And remember, that if I'm, if I'm assessing the AV node or the AV junction, I'm assessing the relationship between the P waves, the atrial P waves, and the ventricular QRS complexes. And so I see this variation here and I wonder, huh, what's the deal? I also notice that my QRSs are regular and when my QRSs are regular, that really concerns me that we have a complete heart block. And so now I say to myself, can I map out the P waves? Where are the P waves? And so let's zoom in and let's take a look at where we think the P waves are. So I see P wave here. If I look back a little bit, you can start to see a little bit of the P wave right merged with the QRS there. So you can see a P wave there, you can see a P wave there. You can see, actually, if I look really closely, look at the T wave. Do you see this little sharp hump on the T wave, that is a P wave. You can always compare T waves to prior T waves. So if you compared that T wave, 
So if I compared this T wave and this T wave, they both look a little different because there's actually a P wave hiding on this T wave. So there's a P wave. We said there's one here, there's one here. And then look at this one, there's a P wave on that T wave right there on the ST segment. So there's all these P waves that are marching through the rhythm. And if I look really closely, the P waves are actually occurring quite regular. They're occurring quite regularly. There's another one, there's another one. And so all my P waves are marching through the rhythm. And then let's look at my QRS complexes and I see I've got QRS, 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 and they're all occurring at a very regular pattern. So when I see P's marching through the rhythm, and I see QRS's marching through the rhythm, and my atrial rate is greater than my ventricular rate, that tells me that my sinus node that's beating the, the atria and my ventricular rate are happening completely independent of each other. That tells me that my AV node is not communicating any of that signal down to the ventricles, and that is really the criteria for a complete AV block. So this right here is a really good example of a complete AV block. Some of you might be asking me the question, well, Reed, how do you know that these P waves are buried in the ST segments? Well, remember that P waves, if you're trying to figure out, you know, which one, if I look here, if you're trying to figure out what is the P wave and what is the T wave, P waves are usually sharp deflections, T waves are broad deflections. And so using context clues, you can look around and say, oh, maybe if I look in lead V1, if I look really closely here, you can see these nice sharp biphasic P waves. And then you can see this sharp biphasic P wave occurs right on the ST segment, right after that QRS complex. And then it's here, and then it's here. So you can use other leads too, to better uh, comprehend the atrial activity, it might be represented better in other leads, and you're gonna get an eye for it over time. So to sum up the criteria of a complete AV block, you're going to have regular P to P intervals. So you're gonna have one regular P to P intervals. That tells me that the atria is beating normally. You're gonna have regular R to R intervals. That means that my QRS complex are occurring regularly. Why is the QRS complex occurring regularly? Because remember, it's going to be an escape rhythm. Escape rhythms are regular rhythms that are generating the QRS complex. And then the last criteria is that the atrial rate is greater than the ventricular rate. And that's because the AV node is the, the part of this rhythm that's failing. So the AV node is failing when P waves are not getting to QRSs. The P waves are occurring faster than the QRSs. And that tells me that there's something wrong with our ability to conduct P waves to QRSs, which is our AV node. So the complete AV block. So I hope this helps uh, put everything together. AV blocks are really difficult. And you know, you just have to see them, you have to get an eye for them, you have to understand the small, subtle nuances between each. Remember that first degree AV blocks are when every P wave conducts to a QRS, it just takes a little bit longer, so our PR intervals are gonna get wide. So we're gonna have a regular rhythm. Next thing we have is our second degree AV blocks, which is when some but not all P waves conduct to the QRS. That's gonna be in a regular rhythm because not all P waves conduct, but a few will do it. So it's gonna be irregularly occurring QRS complexes, but we can find that pattern associated with it, the pattern associated with the irregularity to determine what type of second degree AV block that we have. And then the last type that we have is the complete AV block or the third degree AV block. And like we said here, none of those P waves conduct to the QRS complexes. So all the P's and all the Q's are happening independent of each other. You just have to see through that on the EKG strip like we talked about here. So I hope this helps and if you have any questions, throw them down into the comments. I hope you enjoyed this morning's video with a cup of your coffee of choice. Um, I've got mine here, I drink black coffee and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll see you 
on tomorrow's um, videos. Got some exciting things coming up. Take care.